Hello, we're up to now lesson 7.3, uh, the Pythagorean Theorem and Triples. So, most of you may have heard of the Pythagorean Theorem, but the, and the Pythagorean Theorem is probably one of the most famous relationships in all of mathematics. And it states that in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the length of the legs equals the square of the length of the hypotenuse. Now, this was mentioned earlier when I when we were talking about um, the um, the square root of two, where essentially we called a one and b one, which were the which would be called the two legs. A and b is usually referred to as the two legs. And then C is the hypotenuse. And that was how we got in when we were talking about irrational numbers, the square root of 2, where we used the Pythagorean theorem. And as mentioned, the two sides that come together to form the right triangle are called legs. So the leg and the lengths of the legs often are a and B, and then we have the side across from the right angle, where this is a right angle, is called the hypotenuse. And there is a hypotenuse falling into place. So that is the hypotenuse, which is across from the right angle. And this little square here means that it's a right angle. And we often call the, the, the hypotenuse C. So, again, the Pythagorean theorem says that given a right triangle, that's what, when it has a right angle, we call it a right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C, a squared plus b squared, meaning the lengths of these sides, is equal to c squared, the length of the hypotenuse. So now we're going to look at example one. So we're going to find the value of x, and we're going to give the answer in the simplest radical form that we can. So we're going to use here to do this, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. And as we said, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared is the Pythagorean theorem. And then we substitute 2 for a and 6 for b and then and x for c because we don't know what the hypotenuse is. So there we do it. And then we find 2 squared is 4. And 6 squared is 36, so we have 40x squared. And in order to get rid of the x squared, remember the rule, we'll take the square root of this, and if we, that will give us x alone, and then we'll take the square root of 40, so we can find that the square root of 40 is equal to x. And then, of course, we're going to simplify this. So we're going to look for the perfect, the hidden perfect square. And in this case, it's 4. So there we get x is equal to the square root of 4 times 10. And we can pull out the 4 as a 2. And there we have our final answer. So here we have example two, which is a little more complicated because we have, not only do we have x, but we have x minus one is one of the sides. So we're going to actually go about that and just substitute in as though this is just another a or b, another leg. So here's what we do. We have our Pythagorean theorem and we substitute in x minus 2 for a and 4 for b and then just plain old x for c. So there we go. So here, look, we have this and then we have here and now we want to 
solve that, so we multiply, and we find that we get x squared minus 4x plus 4 for this when we expand this, and then, of course, 4x is 16, and that's equal to x squared because c x squared. But it turns out that these two x squareds cancel out because if I bring this one over here or this one over there, they cancel out when we combine the terms. So we're just left with negative 4x from here, and then 4 plus 16 is 20, and then we did negative x squared minus x squared, I mean plus x plus x squared, and so they cancel out, and then we end up solving for x, and there we get x is equal to 5. And here again, here example 3 is similar to example number 1 where we just want to find the value of x given two numbers. Each leg is identified with a number. And here, again, we use the Pythagorean theorem. We substitute in 4, let's say 4 for A and 8 for B. And you can reverse it. You can say 4 is B and 8 is A. It doesn't really matter but we'll do it this way. So we have 4 squared plus 8 squared is equal to x squared. And there we simplify. Take the square root of both sides. And now we look for the hidden perfect square. And in this case, the hidden perfect square is 16. So we can pull out the 16 as 4. And we get 4 square root of 5. In example number four, again, we want to find the value of x. But here, we have x plus 1 is the hypotenuse. Now, remember, we know that the hypotenuse is what's across from the box here. That means the right angle. So this is going to be the biggest, and these two are the legs. So when we substitute it in, we have x for A, 12 for B, and x plus 4 for C. So we want to solve for x so that we can figure out whether what this side, what this side is and this side is. So here we, we, we do it, and then, of course, we want to expand this. So we end up getting multiply, so here x squared and... 12 squared is 144, and then if we do x plus 4 times x plus 4, we get x squared plus 8x plus 16, and now we want to combine in order to solve for x. Well, it turns out these x squareds are going to cancel out, so we're left with 144 is equal to 8x plus 16. So we bring the 16 over and get 128 plus 8 is equal to 8x. And then, of course, we divide by 8x and we get x is equal to 16. So to finish it up, we now know what the leg is. So our leg here is 16. And then our hypotenuse here, if we add in x plus 16 plus 4, that means that that is 20. In example number 5, we have a similar situation. So here's our C squared. Here's our C. Here's, let's say, A. Let's say, B. And then, so here is C squared. And then I expanded it out here. And here is, let's say, b squared, x squared, and a squared, 9 squared. And then I just proceed to solve that, where x squared plus 81, where 9 squared is 81. And then this implies, so I take this one, and that's equal to, which I had expanded here, 
and this is x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to x squared plus 89. As you see, the x's, x squareds will cancel out, so it makes solving it a lot easier, like or like before. So we have 6x plus 9 is equal to 81, and therefore x is equal to 12. So if we put back here, this leg will be 12, and this is going to be, this leg is 12 plus 3, or 15. Let's look at an application of Pythagorean's, Pythagoras' theorem. So we're going to look at a situation with a ladder leaning against a wall. So we're going to let x be the distance in feet from the foot of the ladder to the base of the wall. And that would be b in our picture here. And then we're going to let 4x be the distance in feet from the top of the ladder to the base of the wall, and that will be a in our picture. Now we're given that the ladder is 30 feet long. So here's the ladder itself is 30 feet long. So we want to figure out what is the distance of the ladder from the wall b. And we want to round that to the nearest foot. So let's look at that. Well, of course, we're going to start out with the Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem, as we have already stated, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where these two are the two shorter sides, and c is the long side, and in this case is the length of our ladder. So now we're going to plug in the appropriate parts. So we're going to substitute in 4x for a, x for b, and 30 for c, because that's the, that's the length of our ladder. So there we do that. And now we solve that. So we multiply and combine like terms. So we end up with 16x squared plus x gives us 17x squared, and 30 squared gives us 900. And now we continue on, and we have x squared is 900 over 17. We take the square root of both sides, and that tells us after we plug these things into our calculator, it tells us that our ladder is approximately 7.8 inches long, but since we're told to round it to the nearest foot, that means it's approximately 7 feet. So the distance in feet from the base of, base of the wall to the ladder is about 7 feet. The next thing we're going to look at is what's called Pythagorean triples. And these are sets of three non-zero whole numbers, A, B, and C, where they obey the Pythagorean rule or the Pythagorean law. That means A must be a whole number, B must be a whole number, C must be a whole number. And here are a few where 3 squared plus 4 squared will be equal to 5 squared. And similarly, 5 squared plus 12 squared will be equal to 13 squared, and so on. So these are called Pythagorean triples. So they must be whole numbers that obey the Pythagorean theorem. So let's look at a few. So now we're going to look at example number 7. So we're going to find the missing length, like we did before, using the Pythagorean theorem, and then we're going to see if, indeed, this is a Pythagorean triple. So let's work on this. So, of course, we start off with the Pythagorean theorem, and we decide which one is going to be A, which one is going to be B, and we plug in the two legs. So we're substituting in, let's say we make 14A, and 48b, and we want to now solve for c. So there we have this. Now we want to take 
the square root of that, and we find that c is equal to 50. Well, 50 is a whole number. So in this case, the side lengths are non-zero whole numbers. So this is 14 is a non-zero whole number. 48 is a non-zero whole number. 50 is a non-zero whole number. And as we just showed, they, owe, they obey the Pythagorean theorem. For number seven, example number seven, we're again going to find the missing side, but in this case, it's a leg. Because as we see, across from the little square here is 12, so that means that's a hypotenuse. This is a leg, so we're missing a leg. So now what we want to do is we want to solve and find what is the length of this leg. So here we have the Pythagorean theorem, and we substitute in 4 squared, let's say, for one leg. We don't know what the, this leg is, so we'll just leave that as b squared. And then we do know what the hypotenuse is, is 12 squared. So we continue and we multiply. So here we have 16 and this is 144, so 16 my, uh, um, 144 minus 16, and then we continue on, and we see that we end up with something that isn't a perfect square. So what happens is that this cannot be a Pythagorean triple because this is not a whole number. So the saw... The, the side lengths do not form a Pythagorean triple because 8 square root of 2 is not a whole number. In example number 9, here we're going to find the missing hypotenuse, or C. So we're going to go about it in our usual way. We're going to plug in the legs. Here's a leg, here's a leg, and solve for c squared. And we're going to mult we're going to take the square of those. So this is 64 and this is 100. So 100 plus 64 gives me 164 and then I take the square root of both sides. But it turns out and simplify, it turns out I can't simplify any further. So just like in number 8, we have a square root here. This is not a whole number, so therefore this cannot be a Pythagorean triple. In example number 10, here we're missing a leg. So we want to see, again, if it's a Pythagorean triple when we solve for what the length of this leg is. So we go about it in our usual way. So let's say we make 24 equal A and this one B. So that's what we're going to solve for. And we multiply and subtract just like we would a regular algebraic situation. And then we find that b is equal to 10. So if this is 10, this is 24, and this is 26, that means that these are all, all three of these are whole numbers. And just like we showed, they obey the Pythagorean theorem. So then that means that this is indeed a Pythagorean triple. In example number number 11, we're going to find the missing side and round to the nearest tenth, tell if the side lengths form a Pythagorean, Pythagorean triple. Well, we can say right off the bat that there is no way that that is a Pythagorean triple. And even when we do solve it, we do get, because this, this is a decimal, 
So therefore, we cannot, that is definitely not a Pythagorean theorem, a triple, I mean, and the fact that we're asked to round to the nearest tenth kind of tells us that we do not have a Pythagorean triple going on here. So no, the length of 2.4 is not a whole number, and therefore this cannot form a Pythagorean triple, even if we solve it accordingly. And it turns out that's what it is when we solve it, 2.6. In number 12, we're going to find the missing side, and we're going to see if it's a Pythagorean triple. We have nothing telling us that it, that it can't be, so let's try. So we use the Pythagorean theorem the same way as we've done in the past, and we'll take one of them. We'll substitute 30 for A and 16 for B. And then we'll multiply and solve accordingly. And we find that when we take the square root of 1,156, we get 34. And 34 is a nice whole number. So therefore, this is a Pythagorean triple because this is a whole number. The hypotenuse here is a whole number. And as we just showed, it obeys the Pythagorean theorem. And similarly, for example number 13, we're going to find again the missing length and see if we get a nice whole number. If we get a whole number, it will be a Pythagorean triple. If it's not a whole number, it will just be a length. So here we go through it. So here I say 12 squared plus 5 squared is equal to 144 plus 25, and I took the square root of that for C. So that means it's the square root of 169, and it turns out that 169 is equal to 13. So what I did was, is I have 12 squared, that means 144 plus 5 squared is 25, and then I added these two up. I got 169. It turns out that 169 is a perfect square, so this is indeed a Pythagorean triple, which would be 5, 12, and 13, and as we just showed, it it's it, is, it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem, and these are all whole numbers. Well, thank you very much, and stay well.